Welcome to Godwart's School of Apologetics, where we never tickle a sleeping dragon, especially a pink one. You're about to have a look at what our prestigious school is known for, training the very best religious apologists in the world. Now, I'm about to give you an inside peek into our Apologetics 101 and 102 classes. The 101 class is taught by the very knowledgeable God Blesses Us Everyday Engineer. We should be very quiet, but let's see what he's up to, shall we? Welcome class! This is the School of Godless Engineer, and today we are going to be discussing Apogenetics. Oh hell, what is this? Hey guys, y'all gotta get in here! Wait, wait a second. Is that creationist cat disguised as Jesus? Let me check on my phone here really quick. Yo, Jockage! Give me a B! Uh, yeah. Creationist cat confirmed. Um, I did notice one promising looking student there in the corner. She seems very attentive. Definitely going to be one of our star students. Uh, never mind the godless engineer bit. Uh, that's totally in the curriculum. Psst, has he been drinking again? Wait, hold on. So sorry, it's Apollo Genetics. Oh, yo, I don't think that's how you spell that. I don't think that, no, that's still not right. Huh? Write a little lower because you're not being able to erase it all because you're writing too close to the other stuff. Thank you, my assistant. Apologia. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Okay. Apogenesis. Genesis. Applegen. No. Apologetic. Shut the fuck up, class. God damn. Who's the fucking teacher here, okay? Hey, everybody, get in here. You gotta check this out. And no, this isn't coffee. It is Jesus juice. That's short for Miller Lite. Apologetics 101. This is a beginner's course, so strap in because we're going to be going over some advanced shit in this course, okay? Thank you for Godless Cranium for having me on today. I fedora tip to you. I think he meant God bless Cranium. <laughs> uh, and there are absolutely no fedoras allowed inside the walls of Godwarts. <clears throat> so, Apologetics 101. First off, Bob, huh? Apologetics? Thank you, class! <laughs> Apologetics 101. First, Bible is true. Okay, this is number one. The Bible's true no matter what. So, number two, when you have a contradiction... <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> class. <laughs> you need some more Jesus juice. Let me get some more Jesus juice. Contradiction. So, two, when you encounter a contradiction, do not fret, do not... Like, you know, throw alarms or anything because revert to number one, the Bible is true. So there actually is no contradiction, but, you know, we got to explain the contra how it's not a contradiction. So then we go on to number three, rearrange shit, rearrange shit. Now this is moving the goalposts and all that other kind of shit. It, even if you have to go back into the Bible and history and rearrange it just so that the Bible matches with history, okay? So let me give you a good for instance here. Let's say that Matthew conflicts with Luke in the biblical narrative of the birth of Jesus. Now it doesn't, okay, but people will say, oh, there's a 10 year difference. Don't fret about it because there's not really a 10 year difference. What you do, right? is you go back into history and you push Herod's death to 1 BCE 
and then Jesus' birth to 3 BCE, which honestly, that's a little, like, that's a little weird because, like, BC before Christ, he was born three years before Christ. It's a little odd, isn't it? Anyways, so you push Jesus' birth to 3 BCE because of some astronomical shit, and then, and then Herod's death is in 1 BCE, and then, you know, you've got the Quirinius uh, census kind of thing happening somewhere in there. We don't know where the fuck, but it happens right around the time Jesus is born. So you rearrange shit around, and you make the kind of apologetics. Now, next what we do is we go to number four. Okay? Present as fact. Now, all you gotta do is you gotta tell people this is what it is and tell them to not actually look into the shit. And if they look into the shit and they're like, no, actual historical records prove you wrong, then uh, what you do is you tell them, no, you're a liar from Satan! And you know, those are Satan's lies! And you hold fast to what you've rearranged in history to match what you already believe. Instead of, you know, learning from history and shit. That's what you do. Anyways, so you present it as fact, okay? Then number five, here's the kicker. This is the tricky one, okay? Number five, repeat. <laughs> Holy shit, guys. Would you look at this stuff? <laughs> you know, he's not that far off. That's all you gotta do. Apologetics 101. Assume Bible's true. If there's a contradiction or a falsity or anything like that, I didn't write all that because you see how I write, then you rearrange shit and then you present it as fact. And then it just keeps on going. You get the whole loopity loop thing, right? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure we quite get it yet. Could you run through it again, please? You present it as fact right here and it proves that the Bible is true because the Bible is true. N number one premise. So the Bible's true because the Bible's true. That's all you gotta know. Wait a second. I thought that we always said that the Bible says it's true. So the Bible says it's true. It is true. Who's the fucking teacher here? Jesus. <clears throat> Welcome to Apologetics 102. My name is God Bless Cranium, and I'll be your teacher today. Before we begin, let's check on our star student over there really quick. Yep, uh, definitely seems well-adjusted and mentally stable. Our classes are good for the mind and soul. Carrying on, the first thing you want to concentrate on is being as obscure as possible. You'll know you've reached God-tier apologetics when you can spew crap like this and be taken seriously as an intellectual. Truly wonderful. I could look at those quotes all day and never get tired of them. Unfortunately, that would make for a boring class. So, let's move on to point number two, which ties in with our first point. Make sure you reference as many books as possible, even if you haven't read them, so you can appear well-read and intelligent. But here's the essential part, class. Never explain the concept you're supposedly referencing. Always remember, obscurity is your friend. Now, if people aren't buying into your name-dropping and attempts to be as obscure as possible, simply call atheism a religion, or better yet, drop the name of a brutal communist dictator. You don't even have to equate atheism with communist dictators. Just imply it so you can maintain your plausible deniability when someone inevitably calls you out on it. That does it for today's class. Before we go, let's check in with our star student and see how she's doing. Yup, mission accomplished. Go forth and spread the good word. Now I'd like to hand you heathens off onto... Well, I guess you're not technically heathens, are you? You're, you're apologetic students. I did this. <laughs> I feel like that. <laughs> oh, it's fun. I'm just gonna leave it here open. I don't know if anybody will be able to see it, but I think it's funny. <laughs> He's gonna take you through Apple Genesis. 102. Oh, Jesus Christ, he's still not getting it. Apologetics! God! God damn it! What the fuck? Can you even tell what my eyes are? This is the worst day of my life. I'm gonna talk to Intel in a minute.
That was great. What the fuck are you doing? Look at my face. Look at this shit. Okay. Are you gagging me? No one was injured during the making of this infomercial. I've been with you since God knows when. You pick me up at the club and then. You take me home, invite me in. The lights go down and we begin.